Hey everybody, welcome back to our podcast. This is Murder With My Husband. I'm Peyton Moreland. And I'm Garrett Moreland. And he's the husband. And I'm the husband. Thank you for listening. If you are tuning in on YouTube, please subscribe and turn on notifications so that you guys can be notified whenever we upload a video. Also, we love the comments on YouTube. We love that comment section. And also, if you are listening on podcast, please subscribe, leave a review, whatever you do. Thank you for interacting. It seriously helps us out so, so, so much. Garrett, do you have your 10 seconds for this week? Well, I'm old. <laughs> <laughs> I did have a birthday this week, so I guess that can be my 10 seconds. Yeah. And, and anniversary. Well, kind no, of, anniversary yeah. was the week before. Yeah, but we do want to say thank you for all the birthday messages that we received on Instagram. It was really fun and awesome, and we were flooded with love, and so it was an awesome birthday for Garrett. We did a poll about doing an update case because we have received some pretty substantial updates for some of our um, episodes in the past that we have done. And so instead of doing an update case this week, we are going to hold off. I'm going to do a week full of updates. I'm actually driving to Idaho to kind of get some more specific updates about the Daybell case. That's JJ and Tylee. I will also do like a quick brief summary of all the cases that we're going to do an update for. So that will be next week. So our update case is coming next week they we actually have quite a few with some pretty good updates so yeah this week we are just going to stick to our plan schedule and do our case that was suggested by Rebecca Aslan so thank you Rebecca for sending this in our case sources this week are a documentary on YouTube Reddit and trcrmaddctn on Tumblr okay so these all are kind of some weird weird okay. things and that's because our case this week is from out of the country and I was having a really really hard time finding sources that were translated for me got it I personally cannot read or understand Swedish and so this case is from Sweden so I had to use sources that were already translated over that being said some of the details might be mixed up or whatever just due to translation errors and also um, I looked up the names and how to say them but if I get them wrong please I'm so sorry i'm trying really hard i just wanted to say i've known a couple people from sweden and i feel like they speak like four or five different languages literally crazy yeah yeah so this might not the some of the sources might not even have been swedish Mm -hmm. but yeah it was just definitely a language i didn't recognize or understand or could read our case this week takes place in Sweden. A young girl named Yona Henningsen was born in 1989 in Sweden. She's the youngest of four children. As a child, Yona loved horses and would continue to throughout her growing years as well as she began competing when she came of age with horses, which fun fact, Garrett's little sisters actually compete riding horses, correct? They do. Yeah, and they have a couple competitions coming up, so uh-huh. that's fun. I've never like actually watched one, so I'm kind of excited to see what that's like. Yeah. Her parents describe her as calm, and she was a well-behaved child. They didn't have much issues with her. In the early 2000s, Yona moved to a town in the south of Sweden when her mother and her father got divorced. So she moved with her mother to a town in south of Sweden. Yona still saw her father sometimes and actually ended up getting along well with her mother's new boyfriend. So everything was kind of flowing smoothly in this divorce. She grows up and on June 6th, 2008, Yona graduates with honors and she has ambitions to become a veterinarian. I mean, she loves horses or a doctor. She ends up living with her father for a bit after graduation, but then moves out on her own into a new apartment down the street. In 2010, Yona begins working as a child care teacher, and in the summer of 2013, Yona begins hanging out with a guy named Jonas. Yona and Jonas meet at a nightclub, and a few months later, they actually begin officially dating. So she's kind of just, she's had a couple relationships after high school. She Mm -hmm. had a serious one in high school. She had another serious one that was kind of toxic after high school. So this is like her third super serious relationship that she's about to get into. Okay. She immediately falls in love with Jonas and like a sickening, toxic love with Jonas. Like he, she couldn't breathe without him type love, but he doesn't quite feel the same intensity for Yona. Their relationship was an on again, off again type for about a year, but it was always Jonas always ending it and Yona always making sure that they got back together. Jonas says that the relationship was toxic and hard from the beginning, really because Yona would get jealous over anything and would become irate, shouting and screaming about it. Like, think about all of these past stories we talk about with a super toxic relationship. Same situation here. 
It was during the first year of their turbulent dating that Yona became pregnant with Jonas's baby. And she never planned on keeping the baby, actually. But when she told Jonas about the pregnancy, he was completely against it. Like, we're oh, not really? keeping the baby, nothing. Okay. And this ended up hurting Yona's feelings really bad, even though she also didn't want to keep the baby. Because she felt like this meant that he didn't see her as long term. Like, why did he want her to terminate the pregnancy so bad? Yona ended up telling Jonas that she went ahead and got an abortion, although she hadn't. Oh, wow. So okay. she's like, okay, I, I did it, even though she hadn't. And she wanted control of the pregnancy and was still upset that he was so against it. So this was her way of being like, I control this, yep. you know? But a couple weeks later, Yona miscarried the baby, oh. or so she thinks. And although Jonas thought that Yona's pain and sadness was due to an abortion, it actually ended up being like a good time for the couple because Yona was like hurting and sad that she had lost the baby. And Jonas was like, thank you so much for aborting the baby. And so they ended up like actually cohesively mm. being okay during this time. Jonas was loving and caring towards Yona as she healed from the miscarriage that he thought was an abortion. And actually I did read on some sources that some people think she made the whole pregnancy up and the miscarriage as well, just to like oh, get him to okay. stick around. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. So when he was like in an abortion, she was upset and then said she miscarried. I'm not sure what the truth is there because that might just be speculation. So there's no like confirmed sources there? No, of like whether she lied about it or not. Okay. She says though, she says that she didn't lie about it, that she actually had a miscarriage. Got it. It was actually around this time though that Jonas began reconnecting with an old family friend named Lovisa. And when Yona found out about the newly kindled friendship, she was not having it. Remember, she's like jealous. Yep. She asked Jonas to stop talking to Lovisa immediately. She was like, no, we're not doing this. Jonas obliged, telling um, Yona that he wouldn't speak to Lovisa anymore. They were just friends, but he wasn't going to speak to her anymore. But we kind of all know how that goes, especially because he was unhappy in his relationship with Yona. So Yona began snooping around, feeling like Jonas had not, in fact, stopped talking to Lovisa. And it was none other than Snapchat that gave him mm. away. Lovisa was one of his best friends on Snapchat. And I don't know if you remember, but at this time, around this time, there was like three best friend Snapchats and that's like who you Snapchat. Yeah, so the I most. was out of Snapchat because oh, I was gone. you were living in Spain. I was in Spain and mm -hmm. I didn't use Snapchat. And so yeah. I remember coming back and everyone was like, best friends. And I was like, it was like what are you guys talking such about? Such a big deal. I actually remember like having a boyfriend in high school and being like, I got to steer clear of who's on my snapchat best friends because oh, that could get you in trouble easily that seems so toxic it is it was like a big deal like snapchat best friends was the way you caught someone cheating which is Got why it. i think it's just ironic that this is how she realized he was still talking to lovisa so the triangle that was going on was actually a love triangle although jonas and lovisa had started off as friends they had quickly began having a relationship together a sexual relationship and all of this came to head one night when yona lovisa and jonas all ended up at the same club okay so all three of them end up at the same club and actually yona and lovisa begin talking like they're like hey i know you exist you know i exist yeah and they decide it's time to confront Jonas and make him choose one of them. What? Yeah. So instead of being like, hey, girl, we're dating the same guy. Let's dump him together. They're just holding hands at the club. Yeah. All right, Jonas. All right, Jonas. It's time. Who do you want? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So there would no longer be two girlfriends in the picture for Jonas. They were going to confront him. Jonas had told Lovisa that he was going to be with her and ever and end everything with Yona. But he had also basically said the same thing to Yona about Lovisa. So they go up to him and they're like, that's it. Choose which one of us is it going to be? Jonas told them that night he couldn't pick. He didn't know which one he loved more. So he would continue to date both. What in the world? This is this is crazy. Insane. So Jonas left the club with his friends. Keep in mind, they're like at a club. So they're drunk. Like, I don't this think feels so like high school. Yes. Or not high. I don't know if high, like just immature. All yes. this just seems mm -hmm. kind of immature. So Jonas leaves the club with his friends and Yona and Lovisa stay back at the club and talk for about an hour, just about everything. This is what he says to me. This is what we do. And Lovisa's like, well, this is what he says to me. And this is what we do. And they're both really sad 
leaving the club because they realize that they both are in love with the same guy. Yeah. And he has absolutely no intention of picking one of them. And they're both scared that they're going to be the girl he doesn't pick, which is funny because I feel like I would be turned away if I felt like a guy was choosing between me and another girl. Uh And they were like, no, we will fight this to the death. Like we will be one of the girls he picks. Yona took Jonas's response to mean that she would now have to compete and fight for his love, which she was not opposed to doing. Mm. Remember, she is the jealous type. She is the rageful type. So she began obsessively doing all she could to keep Jonas around and picking her, choosing her, loving her. Remembering how nice I you didn't get that reference. No, I did not. <laughs> it's from Grey's Anatomy. <laughs> oh, She's like, well, pick makes me, sense. choose me, love yeah, me. Yeah, I did not get that at all. I yeah. said, okay, keep going. <laughs> I know. I said it expecting you to laugh. Yeah. At you. <laughs> So she began obsessively doing all she could to keep Jonas around, remembering how nice he had been after her miscarriage, which he thought was an abortion. Yona decided to slice her own stomach open and then stitch it back up. What? So she could then tell Jonas that she had a major operation and could he please come over to help her heal like he had when she had had the abortion miscarriage. Okay. Yeah. And there was some speculation that maybe this happened before the abortion. And so then maybe she lied about the abortion. But either way, she full on lied about this surgery. There was no actual surgery. She literally took a knife, cut open her stomach, sewed it just so that he would love her. Okay. Jonas reacted exactly how he had with the abortion. He came over. He gave her love and care. Her bad behavior was being unknowingly rewarded. Yeah. And Jonas was telling her, you know, I'm cutting it quits with Lovisa. I love you. I'm going to stay here. I'm going to take care of you after this major operation. Like, I'm all in on you. That's how this whole thing ended. The love triangle created a love crazy yona this was about to be taken past the point of no return oh no i think we all know that this last year has been especially tough physically spiritually and mentally there is nothing wrong with acknowledging that this last year and every day in general can be kind of draining so our sponsor this week is better help better help is not a crisis line but professional counseling done securely online BetterHelp will assess your needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist online. You can actually send a message to your counselor anytime where you get timely and thoughtful responses. Plus, you can schedule weekly video or phone sessions. So this is literally like having a therapist at your fingertips. BetterHelp is more affordable than traditional offline counseling and financial aid is available. Everyone deserves this if they want it or need it. The service is available for clients worldwide and anything you share is confidential. BetterHelp is convenient, professional, affordable, and not a crisis line. Start living a happier life today. As our listeners, you'll get 10% off your first month by visiting our sponsor at betterhelp.com slash husband. Ooh. I know. Join (laughs) over 1 million people who have taken charge of their mental health. Again, that's BetterHelp, not health. Help, H-E-L-P dot com slash husband for 10% off your first month. One night when Jonas and Yona were sleeping together, Jonas gets a call from Lovisa and they both wake up and he's like, oh, she's calling me. And he decides to answer it and he takes it outside despite Yona being like, no, you just said you were done with her. Like you said, she was out of the picture. Yona feels like she can't trust Jonas. And so she decides to write Lovisa on Facebook and ask her to leave them alone. So she sends Lovisa a Facebook message and is like, hey, he's picked me. He chooses me. He doesn't want you. We're together. Please leave us alone. And Lovisa reads it. But she doesn't respond. And then she goes on to forward or show the message to Jonas. And they sit and make fun of Yona for sending the message. Like how childish. Like in person or over text? In person, I think. Like they meet up and do this. So after this, Yona becomes lovesick. Like she can't eat. She can't sleep. She's literally physically ill because of it. Like she's throwing up every day because of this love triangle. Oh, man. For about a week, she goes into severe depression. And this whole time, she's still sleeping at Jonas's place all week. But they're fighting the whole week as well because Yona is not in a good place. Like, she can't help but bring up the fact that he still is in contact with Lovisa and that, you know, he, you said you would pick me. And she's, 
she's spiraling, like she's going down. So at the end of this week for Yona and Jonas, this really toxic, they've been fighting all week and she's been spiraling. Jonas tells Yona that he wants to be alone and he needs some time to think things through. So this week that was horrible for her, instead of ending back up, she's now basically getting down. kicked out of Jonas's yeah. apartment um, where she was sleeping. And so Yona freaks out. She begins begging him to stay. No, 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 no. Please, please don't do this. And he's like, no, you need to leave. And I need my keys back to the apartment. And so for Yona, this is like, that's it. Like he's picked her. Like he's kicking me out. He doesn't want me this whole yeah. week. I've turned him away from me and now I can't go back. And so Yona clears some of her stuff out. She leaves some other stuff and, and then she leaves the apartment. Four days go by. And Yona, who's 24 years old, by the way, decides to hatch a plan to scare Lovisa out of fighting for Jonas's love. So she's like, if I can't fight hard enough to win Jonas over, I'm going to scare my competition out of, oh my of competing against me. So then that way he just has to pick me because I'm the only one left. So that's where her mind goes. Brutal. Yes. She was tired of the competition. She wanted him all to herself. So early the morning of June 18th, 2014, Yona decides that she would go to Jonas's apartment while he was at work and while Lovisa was there alone. Because keep in mind, Yona has now been kicked out and Lovisa has taken her spot at the apartment. So she saw Lovisa's car in the apartment complex. So she knew that he was at work and that Lovisa was probably in there getting ready to go to work. So when she showed up, she actually tried to get into Lovisa's car in the parking lot, but it was locked. And I don't know if she thought I'll just hide in here and then confront her. I don't know. But she tries to get in and it's locked. So then she walks up to Jonas's apartment and waits in the stairwell. So like, you know how there's like apartment doors and then stairs that go up kind of on the side. Yep. Usually uh -huh. she's waiting in that stairwell for Lovisa to come out. That's so scary. Exactly. So when 22 year old Lovisa finally decides, OK, it's time to leave for work. She opens the door and she steps out and she turns around to close the door. Yona steps forward out of the um, stairwell and slams a hammer into the side of Lovisa's head. What? Yes. Yeah, so she was not here to confront. No, she was there to kill her. She was there to eliminate the competition. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. So she expects her to pass out. She expects Lovisa to pass out from hitting her in the head with the hammer. Yep. Lovisa does not. Lovisa falls to the ground and begins moaning and crying. I'm like, she just yeah. got hit in the head with a hammer. Yona drags her into the apartment that is Jonas's apartment and then into the bathroom. And she covers Lovisa's mouth with a towel because Lovisa is crying out. She's screaming for help. She's crying out. And Yona didn't plan for this. She thought that Lovisa would pass out from being hit in the head with the hammer. So by this time, the neighbors had heard the cries. Because keep in mind, it took a second for her to hit her, yeah. drag her in, like close the door, put the towel on. The neighbors have heard the cries and they've come over to figure out what's going on. And so they begin ringing the doorbell. So Yona is inside. She just hit Lovisa oh in the gosh, head with a hammer. Is Lovisa is screaming. Yona's trying to get her to stop. And the neighbors are just incessantly ringing the doorbell to see if everything's okay. Like the pure panic yeah. and turmoil that's going on right now. Yona begins panicking, obviously, like I just said, and she begins stabbing Lovisa with what? a knife. Where'd she get this knife from? She brought it with her, the hammer and the knife and more. She brought a kill kit. So she begins stabbing Lovisa with a knife. And then when that's not working very well, she begins injecting her with syringes that she had filled with alcohol and sleeping pills. What? So I don't understand. To me... It feels like Yona was trying to get her to pass out, like get control of the situation. That's why she brought the hammer and just hit her once in the head. And then she thought, maybe if I stab her, she'll stop crying. She didn't. So then she's like, I'm going to inject her with. Yeah, maybe if I stab her with a sharp I object, know. she'll be I quiet. Know. So she brought all this to the apartment with her. And the sleeping pills and alcohol are to knock her out. Okay. Not kill her, which is why I'm confused. I'm just confused about it. You know what I mm -hmm. mean? Yona decides, okay, none of this is working. Like she's not passing out from the alcohol or the sleeping pill injection. So she needs a sharper knife. And if you think about this. What is up with this ni the knife and this girl? Like, but if you think about this, how did she come to that conclusion? That she yeah. needs a sharper knife. Think about how that, like, yes. that's how the situation was so bad. Because it was obviously not a sharp enough knife 
to easily push through. So she was like, that's it. I need a sharper one. Like that makes me sick. Mm -hmm. And so she walks into Jonas's kitchen because they're at Jonas's apartment in search of a knife. And then once she finds one, she goes back in and continues with the new knife that is sharper. The doorbell eventually stops ringing because no one was answering it. And Lovisa eventually stops moving and talking. I mean, she's now been yeah. injected, hit in the head, stabbed repeatedly. Yona knows at this point that she has to get rid of the body because Lovisa has died. So she leaves the apartment to head home and change clothes. And then she goes back to the apartment and then realizes that she has nothing to dispose of the body with. So she drives back to her apartment and gets some plastic bags and a saw. After retrieving the items and on the way back to Jonas's apartment, Yona gets pulled over for speeding. Now, I don't know if this is true or not because trying to translate was hard and I couldn't find this on like an actual source. It was more just like on Tumblr or Reddit. Yeah. And so maybe this didn't happen, but I'm going to say it anyways, because if the, like, what are the chances of this? And it's unreal. So she just killed her lover's other lover. And the body is back at the apartment where she is heading to dispose of with a plastic bag and a saw all in her car. And she gets pulled over. Apparently the cops don't notice anything unusual. They just give her the speeding ticket and Yona is off to finish what she started. So she heads back to Jonas's apartment. And originally Yona tries unsuccessfully to just fit Lavisa's La whole body into the plastic bag. Okay. But obviously we know that a plastic bag is not huge. You would need a body bag. And so after that doesn't work, she determines that she will in fact have to dismember Lovisa's body to transport it out of the apartment. Now I will say here a female killer is pretty rare. Like it's pretty rare for there to be a, fem a female killer. It's even rarer for a female killer to stab, hit, like hit over the head with a hammer. Normally it's like a gun or just in a less brutal way of killing mm -hmm. someone. And it's even more rare for a female killer to dismember their victim. Okay. So this is like pretty insane yeah. right now, especially because Yona has no past criminal history. She has never been arrested. She has never been like arrested for being in a fight or anything like that. So it's kind of weird. It was zero to 100. Before leaving the apartment for good that day, Yona writes Jonas a letter and leaves it in his apartment, like on the table. And this is what the letter says. Keep in mind, this was translated once again. So if there's like some weird funky words or whatever, that's why says, hi, considering your silence towards me, I have realized that you have not chosen me. So I thought to stop by to collect my things. I was greeted by a furious low visa. Glad to see you've already moved on. I'll mail you your key and remove all things that might remind you of me from your apartment. I hope you and Lovisa will be very happy together. She reminds me of you when she's angry. Take care. I will always love you, Jonas. Hugs from your Yona. What? But she had literally just killed and dismembered Yeah, Lovisa. she just... Stabbed her to death. Yeah. Okay. Yona then walks over to the neighbor's house, mm -hmm. rings the doorbell and says, okay, guys, I know you were came over to check on everything. I'm so sorry. I was actually fighting with Jonas, but we're fine now. We're, we ended our relationship. I won't be here anymore. So you don't have to worry. Everything's fine. So she's like trying to backtrack. Yeah. Around 2.30 p.m. She then drives Lovisa's car to work and performs a day of work with Lovisa's body parts and everything from the crime in the trunk of her own car back at Jonas's apartment. So she had actually cut her palm during the struggle and mm. the killing. And she told coworkers that Lovisa had actually attacked her when she showed up to get her things out of the apartment. Yona then drove to the city after work where she ditched Lovisa's car and then took a bus back to Jonas's apartment to get her own car where Lovisa's body was sitting in the trunk. Yona drove to a wooded area and dumped six bags in the woods where she then Whoa. drove home. Three of the bags had body parts and then the other three just had things that had happened like, you know, bloody blankets or whatever. Got it. Yona ends up telling her roommate when she gets home that she had gone over to get her things from Jonas's apartment, but ran into Lovisa there. And that Lovisa began attacking her and got a hold of a knife and cut her hand open. Look at the cut on my hand. Yona then tells her roommate that she managed to get the knife 
and stabbed Lovisa in the neck and killed her. She's like, I stabbed her in the neck and she ended up dying. And her roommate was probably like, why did you dismember her? Yeah. And then- well, she actually didn't tell her oh. that she had dismembered her. She just said, I got rid of the body. But And the roommate's actually a boy. Okay. This is like some drama, but it was her ex-boyfriend that she was living with oh. while dating Jonas. Okay. Apparently they were like okay with still living together or something. Okay. So she tells her ex-boyfriend this. And then she calls her sister and says, hey, you know, I killed Lovisa in self-defense. And both the ex-boyfriend and her sister are like, hey, you need to call the police and tell them what yeah. happened. Like if it was self-defense, you're going to be fine. And so she calls the police. I am actually really, really excited about this sponsor. When they reached out to us, I was... I was pumped to say the least. Orate is a fine jewelry brand founded by women for women. Pieces range from classic to statement to completely original. Orate makes the jewelry you've always wanted but can never find. Orate is insanely good quality because it's all real gold. You can wear it and never have to take it off. Shower, sport, sleep, cook, anything. It's jewelry for life. Yeah, I actually never ever take my jewelry off when I'm showering and I end up having to change it out all the time because it goes bad after so many showers and whatnot. And so that's why I love my Orate jewelry. And it comes with a lifetime warranty because they know that the product will last. And so if something does by chance happen to it, lifetime warranty. Orate sells direct to you without the middleman markup. They can offer the same quality as traditional Fifth Avenue brands at a fraction of the cost. And it's all ethically sourced and sustainably made. Their gold is never mined and their gemstones and diamonds are also certified conflict free, which is like great. That's amazing. For 15% off your first Orate purchase, go to OrateNewYork.com slash MWMH and use promo code MWMH. She tells the police, hey, I showed up. Basically the same story she's been saying over and over. I showed up to get my things. She attacked me. I got a hold of the knife and stabbed her in the neck and she died. And so they're like, okay, well, where's the body? They find the body and the police are like, hi, um, the body was injected with sleeping pills and alcohol and also was hit in the head and also was stabbed multiple times, not just once in the neck. Yeah. We know you're lying. And dismembered. Yes. And dismembered. So we know you're lying. Yeah. And she's like, okay, yes, um, I, I lied. I wanted Lovisa to die because she wasn't good enough for Jonas and he had evidently picked her. Oh, so she told the truth. She ends up telling the truth very fast. Yona had hit Lovisa so hard with the hammer on that first blow that it would have killed her alone after a couple hours. Oh, really? Yeah, like if she had not immediately sought medical attention, she she would have died. Yona had also Googled, this all comes out at trial. Yona had also Googled how to kill someone, how to carry and dispose of a body, She had searched the easiest way to kill somebody, how to hire a hitman, injecting someone with alcohol, jumping in front of a train, autopsy after a suicide, and much more. She had full on planned this murder. No doubt. Yona also tells police that she studied the Netflix show Dexter. Okay. And have you seen Dexter? Yes, I have. It's basically about a professional serial killer. And she's like, I studied that show and I tried to emulate it, which... She did a horrible job if she's trying to emulate Dexter. Anyways, this has now nicknamed her in Sweden, the female Dexter. Like that's what they call her as a killer. Psychiatric investigation shows that um, Yona had difficulty predicting what her actions would eventually lead to. So she was like, oh, I'm going to go kill this. I planned it. And then went back to her roommate and was like, so I killed them. And didn't think ahead about how there would be evidence with the body that this was not the way it went down. You know, Yona tells police that Dexter, the TV show, made it look so easy on TV, but it was actually a lot harder in real life to kill somebody. It's almost like she kind of enjoyed it. I agree. I agree. It's a little weird. It's weird. And poor LaVisa. Yeah. Like that she got killed for no reason. Yeah. It's horrible. It is horrible. And also... I feel like Lovisa and Yona were kind of on the same team. Yeah. Like they spent time together at the bar or at the club, you know, just hanging out, talking, both being sad about their situation just for her to turn around and kill her. Yeah. 
So April 24th, 2016, Jona Henningsen was sentenced to life in prison, which is a pretty big deal in Sweden, I guess. A lot of coworkers and friends have come forward and said that they can't comprehend that Jona would do this, that she was super nice. She wasn't violent. She actually seemed to be squeamish, like she was scared of needles. She was sensitive to blood. And then just turned around and did this. Yona says that she doesn't know if she actually did what she's convicted for. And so she's confused. She doesn't understand how all the evidence points mm. to her because she doesn't believe she did it. So almost like she has, uh, what's it called? Like when you turn into another person? Uh-huh. Like um, this, like personality disorder, like I think yeah. it's like disassociative or something like that. That's kind of what it feels to me because she says like she doesn't really remember anything. And also I'm not going to make excuses for her. No, not I at all. I yeah. feel like she full on planned this. It wasn't like heat of the moment. They got in a fight. No, you know she I mean? planned it. And so I feel like it's hard to be like, well, I don't remember it because you planned it. You know yeah, what I mean? She was searching things on Google yes. for who knows how long. So I've, I'm, and do I think that that's a super traumatic thing to kill somebody and there's a chance that your brain like diminishes the memory? Yes, I do think that's possible. But do I think that she went there to kill her? Yes. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, so that is the story of Lovisa. Oh, poor Lovisa. She didn't do anything wrong. I mean, yeah, she didn't do anything wrong. No. She did nothing wrong to deserve to be killed. Well, and even if she had, no one deserves yeah, to exactly. like be killed in that That's way you horrible. know what i mean and it's just crazy the love the things people do when they're in love it's just your yeah i guess your brain your mind is I so know. powerful just it's insane better help yeah better help right yeah that is our story this week and we just want to say thank you to everyone who's listening we seriously love you guys so 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 much and we are so grateful to be doing this every week and we are excited for our update episode next week and also our patreon link is in our bio so if you want to support the show um you can check that out and we will see you guys next week with another episode i love it and i hate it goodbye mm-hmm.